What is up, everybody? This is episode number 31 of ESO Recapped. My name is Defa Tank, and we're going to be talking about update number 5, 1.5, that just went out to the live servers this past week. We're also going to be talking about the six-month loyalty reward and also address a couple of things with the veteran points to XP changes that uh, as well. As always, we're going to have a couple of guys here that's going to be fielding some of the questions in the live Twitch stream for ESO Recap. We've got Ops that's joining us tonight. Ops, if you want to go ahead and give a hello out to the uh, the stream. Hello. Also, we got Dignified Mouse. He does not have a, uh, a mic, but nonetheless, Dignified says hello to everybody. And we have also got Landakian. Landakian, are you out there? What up? So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump straight into Update 5. This was a, uh, a very, very big patch. We got 37 plus pages of notes that came down. And yeah, we're not going to cover every single little bitty detail. So there's plenty of things out there after what I cover that you can really dig deep down into. But we're going to hit the, uh, the main points. First off, Update 5. What did we get? Veteran Rank City of Ash. This is a continuation of the normal mode city of ash and i'm not going to spoil the story for you but it is veteran rank 14 it's got some very amazing bosses in it and very very difficult fights so uh you're you're going to be pushed with your your group in there and they're they've done something a little bit different with this uh you kind of start off where things left off with this and you get to see a whole new area of city of ash that you've never even seen before so uh if you've not been in there yet check that out it, it's very very cool also facial animation improvements this is something that came up in QuakeCon and they were basically showing us the stiff jaw that we've been seeing for quite a while in the game that's starting to fade away this is just a, a first phase if you will of facial animation improvements they're basically covering from the nose down and there's a lot of focus on lip movement and mouth movement and thing, make, making it look more realistic. Uh, so whenever you talk to these NPCs and you're looking at them, it looks natural. So some really good improvements there. Next, veteran rank improvements. You're going to be earning attribute points and skill points now for each veteran level that you gain. So whenever you hit 50 and you turn into veteran rank 1, you're going to start getting attribute points and skill points for every vet level that you gain that's new they also reduce the amount of hp magicka and stamina rewarded on a veteran rank gain by 35 percent this is to com compensate for the new attribute point rewarded next dungeon scaling this is also another huge thing that they've added into the game and it's it's a really good thing so first what is dungeon scaling it is exactly what it sounds like dungeons scale to your level but how does it work first non-vet dungeons will not scale below their the level they are currently introduced at but will scale up to vet 12 so what does that mean if you decide to go into say vault of madness it's a level 40 dungeon you're not going to scale vault of madness down to level 15 or down to level one or whatever it will only scale down to what it's minimally designed to do but it will scale up to a maximum of vet 12. so all vet dungeons with the exception of vet city of ash are now available from vet rank one to vet rank 12. Vet rank dungeons will scale up as well. Currently, dungeons will not scale up to vet rank 13 and 14. Um, you're basically getting a lot of health increases, more damage, uh, the mechanics hitting harder, things like that with the scaling. So vet rank 12 gets pretty difficult with things. Uh, scaling is determined by the group leader upon entering. Scaling does not change if the leader changes or leaves the dungeon. So if you enter with leader vet rank one, it's going to stay vet rank one. What that means is item drops inside of the dungeon will also reflect that scale of level of the monsters for the players receiving the item or whichever is lower. So what does that mean? If we run into a vet dungeon that is vet rank seven, okay, we're setting it to vet rank seven. Elemental, thank you for the follow, man. 
new follower. If we enter a dungeon, it's vet rank 7. And we've got a guy that's vet rank 2. The vet rank 2 guy is going to get vet rank 2 gear because it's lower. Everybody else is going to get vet rank 7. It, so if I'm vet rank 14 and I'm in a vet rank 7 scaled down dungeon, I will get vet rank 7 gear. I will not get vet rank 14 out of that dungeon. But the level 2 will get vet rank 2 gear. He will not get vet rank 7, so he can use that gear. Uh, let's see. Next thing. The following scale, which is going to be group dungeons and veteran dungeons. So group dungeons are those instanced dungeons. Veteran dungeons are instanced as well. Uh, the following do not scale. Delves, Craglorn Delves, Overland Content, Public Dungeons, and Trials. Solo scaling. Uh, solo instances will now uh, scale to your level. This means when you play through the main story, Fighters Guild, Mages Guild, and other solo content, it will remain a challenge and you can do it on your own time. There are some things to note about solo scaling. Solo instances do not scale below the level they are introduced. For example, this Rini Arena begins scaling from level 42 and goes up. Solo instancing does not scale past vet rank 12 at this time. Solo scaling is determined by your level upon entering the instance and remains there for the session. Solo scaling recognizes when you're having a difficulty with a particular instance and will compensate accordingly. So if you continue to die from something that's just, you know, vet rank 12 and it's just killing you and killing you and killing you, it's going to recognize that and it's going to throttle things back a little bit so you can progress through it. But, you know, the first time you step in there, it's going to be difficult. And that, that basically keeps this thing from, you know, doing all these quests and you get some high levels going on and it's like, oh, I forgot to do the main storyline. And you go back to do the main storyline and recognize, oh my gosh, this is like level 10. And you're so over-leveled it. So it's going to scale up for you now to remain a challenge. The following solo content will now scale. Main quest, Fighters Guild, Mages Guild, uh, Werewolf Quest, Vampire Quest, the Zrini Arena, Ori of Elden Root, Cathedral of Golden Path in South Point. The Undaunted Enclave and Pledges. Undaunted and Enclave Pledges are new to members following the invitation to the Enclave to join up. The Undaunted has established enclaves near the capitals of each alliance. They invite adventurers to join them in the spoils of Dungeon Conquest. At these locations, members of the Undaunted may acquire quests known as Pledges, which will send you into various dungeons to defeat the enemies within. Note, each type of Pledge may be performed once every 20 hours. There are two types of pledges available, which will send you into number one, a vet dungeon, and number two, a non-vet dungeon, respectively. Non-vet pledges become available at level 45, and veteran pledges unlock at vet rank one. Successfully completed pledges result in a key. The quality of the key is determined by both the type of pledge and whether optional objectives have been fulfilled. These keys are used to open chests at the Undaunted Enclaves for a chance at a various special rewards, including unique item sets and more. Undaunted Enclaves are also included in the Undaunted Quartermasters who carry stocks of general goods, particularly useful for dungeon and, in, and adventuring. So I want to go back and address a couple things with this. When you go into uh, the game for the first time, you're going to get a piece of mail. You're going to open your mailbox up, and it's going to have an envelope. You're going to read that envelope. It's going to give you a quest. This quest is going to send you to your hometown. For Evan Pack, it's Deshaun. Over towards the west of the Deshaun, you're going to have the, the Enclave. It is outside of the walls. So you go out there, and you're going to talk to a couple of NPCs. One is a male wood elf. The other is a female red guard, if I remember correctly. They will give you a quest, kind of talking back and forth to one another to familiarize yourself with the Enclave and you see everything that's there. In turn of completing this, you're going to get a bronze key. This is to show you how to use the chests. The chests are located under the um, pavilion there. 
There's three chests. There's a bronze, a silver, and a gold. You use the bronze chest. It opens up. The bronze chest will yield gold, probably a soul gem, and a green piece of gear could be also a set piece of gear from the Undaunted. Uh, these are new set uh, set items just introduced with 1.5 as well. After you do that, you're going to go back and talk to the Red Guard. She's going to give you a normal dungeon daily. And that's where, at level 45, that begins. So it'll tell you, okay, for today's daily, you can go do this normal dungeon. Keep in mind that will scale up as well. So you vet 14 people. It's going to scale up with you, and you can still do it. They may say, okay, you need to kill these three bosses. But if you kill the other three bosses in there, we're going to give you a better reward. So if you seek out all the bosses, you'll get a silver key. If you only kill the minimum required bosses, you'll get a bronze key. If you do the silver key, why do you want the silver key? You're going to come back and you get the silver key. You open the silver chest. It's going to, again, give you gold. It's going to give you a um, shard. It's also going to give you a blue piece of gear. So, again, it's going to save you from having to upgrade the green to blue by saving materials. It could be a set item as well. Next, you're going to talk to the male Wood Elf, giving it your Vet Rank 1. He'll do the same thing. He's going to give you a Veteran Rank quest. This means you're going to have to go find a Veteran Dungeon, which there's eight in the world right now that we have, including City of Ash, since it's new. And it's going to say, hey, go through this, you know, kill these bosses. If you can kill the bosses, you get a Silver Key. If you can manage to do the hard mode of it, which is... At the last boss, there's something special you do, whether it's leaving ads up or doing something special by activating something, making it more difficult. Then it'll uh, activate that you've done the hard mode and reward a gold key. You can take this gold key back, open up the uh, gold chest. This gold key has a chance. Of course, it's going to drop gold and everything I said before, but it's going to drop purple gear instead of blue, and it has a chance to drop set items. These are new set items that match up with a headpiece. This headpiece uh, is obtainable by doing veteran rank dungeons and killing s some of these bosses in these vet rank dungeons. For instance, Wayrest Sewers, the spider looking chick there, and she thinks she's the second boss. She will drop a headpiece that looks like her head. Uh, Wayrest, the last boss, which is a Dwemer spider, he'll drop a headpiece that looks like a Dwemer head. So these set bonuses have a one trait bonus and a two trait bonus on them. The one trait bonus generally gives like health, stamina, or magicka. So you get an instant effect. Then it's going to have a two set bonus. The two set bonus comes from you doing this purple pledge or getting the purple key, uh, the hard mode, and getting the shoulder piece. And the shoulder piece is also a special texture to match that head piece. So uh, they match up, look the same, and that gets you the two-set bonus. The two-set bonus could give you things like health regeneration on, on hit or uh, stamina regeneration, magical regeneration. There's one that, like when you're hit, it puts a beam on uh, an ad or ads that hit you. If they stay within 10 meters, it will heal you. There's one that does like this web, does CC, does damage. One summons a... Uh, one of the lich crystals that blow up and do damage. I've seen one that will summon a Daedroth to fight for you. He does some damage as well. So it really, really cool and unique things that come out with uh, with that. So that's kind of the goal with these, uh, these purple rewards that you want to shoot for. Next, we're going to talk about crafting certifications, writs, and survey reports. Now this is uh, daily... That crazy cat guy. Thank you for the follow, man. Very much appreciate New that. follower. Crafting certification writs and survey reports. Um, again, is a daily. You're going to have to become certified before you can do the writs and reports uh, to, to do these daily things. So when you go into your main homeland, there's going to be uh, an NPC that you talk to to so say, hey, I need to get certified. There's going to be two of them. One of them does your provisioning, your enchanting, and your alchemy. The other one does blacksmithing, woodworking, and clothing. You can only focus on one certification at a time. If you are not level 50, you have to do the certification by crafting what he wants you to do. 
If you're our 